Greetings everyone. So for this video, I will have a review on this little TPA3116 amp modules. Again, I'm not sure if this is an authentic Texas Instruments IC. And this board is rated at 50 watts per channel. But I highly doubt it because it doesn't have a heatsink. Even though it's class D, this thing will still dissipate heat because it's not a 100% efficient amp and this board doesn't have an output filter as well. So first, we'll have a sound test if this thing sounds good without a filter. I'll discuss the sound quality at the end. For now, we'll do the power test. Since this board doesn't have an output filter, unlike other Class D amps module, I'll use this uh, filter from a TPA3110 board. This is the schematic diagram for that filter. I will load both channels with 4 ohms load to see if this thing can survive without a heatsink. Now to differentiate the outputs, Without a filter, the output audio will include high frequency switching. Although you'll not hear any of it because it is way above the audible frequency, but it can contribute to the output as distortion. Now, this is the output with a filter connected. Upon testing, I've noticed that using a phone as an audio source, the output doesn't reach clipping point. I also noticed two 1 kilo ohm resistor connected between input and ground, making the input impedance around 1 kilo ohms, which is pretty low. You see, this phone here is on its maximum volume, but at 12 volts, the output is only around 3.4 RMS. With 16 volts, the output is almost the same, and even at 20 volts of input. And with higher voltage input, the chip gets very hot, with an output power of around 3 watts RMS per channel. That means they've designed this board to have a low gain to prevent the chip from overheating because it doesn't have a heatsink. Now, to drive this thing up to clipping point, uh, you can either use a preamp with it, or you can increase its gain by removing these two 1K resistors here. And by replacing this 100k resistor with a 75 kilo ohms one, and this 20 kilo ohms with a 47k resistor. These are the resistor value for the gain setting. You can get those resistor values if you have a broken TPA3118 board. I'll use this as an audio source. Uh, it does have a maximum 2 volts peak to peak amplitude. I only removed two 1k resistors for the test. Now for the 12 volt supply, there's clipping, now driving this thing without a heatsink, the chip gets very hot at only 12 volts. So I've got 5.76 RMS squared divided by 4 ohms load and we've got 8.29 watts RMS per channel with 4 ohms at 12 volts. To test this board with higher voltage, heatsink is badly needed but it needed a specific size of heatsink because these capacitors are a bit higher than the chip. I'll use this transistor base as a spacer Now the heat sinks attach. For the 16 volts of input, 
Anders Clipping. I've got 7.54 RMS squared divided by 4 ohms load and we've got 14.21 watts RMS per channel at 16 volts. Now with 20 volts supply, there's clipping. I've got 8.85 RMS squared divided by 4 ohms load and we've got 19.58 watts per channel now with 24 volts uh, there's clipping oh so that was 8.95 rms squared divided by 4 ohms load and we have 20 watts per channel at 24 volts now it's almost the same with the 20 volt supply probably some current limit is kicking in with the chip the heatsink got hot but not that hot to touch with a heatsink attached this board survived at 24 volts outputting a total power of 40 watts rms with 4 ohms load For the sound quality, it sounds like a typical Class D amplifier with or without a filter on its output. But at higher volume level, the unfiltered output sounds distorted compared to the filtered output. So an output filter really helps with the sound quality. For the output power, uh, if you don't modify these resistors to increase its gain, and use a weak audio source like any mp3 player without using a preamp or without modification you'll only get around 5 watts rms per channel at any input voltage because of a very low gain if you modify this a heatsink is badly needed for this chip to output these power values For the price, uh, I bought this at 87 pesos, that's less than 2 USD. So with that very small price, uh, this board is decent to me, especially if you know how to modify this board. The chip they've used here is fairly good for 87 pesos, it's a good buy. I'll rate this board with an uh, 8.2. That will be all and if you have questions regarding this review, uh, comment down below, give it a like and we'll do something else for the next one.